Hey guys, I just found an awesome channel on YouTube called Young Hollywood. You all need to go check it out and subscribe. They got the hottest names in music, movies, TV, fashion, sports, you name it, they got it. Click the annotation here to subscribe to this channel and leave a comment telling them while we're sent you. Believe it or not, zombie viruses and toxins are actually real and they've existed for quite some time. It's only up until recently that scientists have discovered some of these viruses and the effects that they have on their victims or hosts when injected. What's going on everybody? My name's Adam. On YouTube I go by OG Walrus. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for subscribing. Hope you guys are all doing well. So in this particular commentary, I've got uh, two examples. One example of a real life zombie virus and one example of a real life zombie toxin. Before I get on to, uh, before I get into those two particular examples, let me just quickly touch on the gameplay here. Obviously, playing Modern Warfare 3, and I'm rocking the uh, KSG shotgun. Now, my next video that I do, you guys, I've um, I've accumulated some some really nice theater mode footage, and I'm going to be bringing you another episode of Ultimate Class Setup Guide, where I'll basically be breaking down this particular class setup. It's a lot of fun to use, however, it is really challenging. Don't get me wrong. But for those of you guys that know me, you know I like to mix it up. You know I don't like to play one way. So uh, I've got a lot of good footage coming your way for this particular setup. And this is kind of funny right here. Look at this. Watch. Now you see me. Now you don't. Surprise! <laughs> Man, that is fun. But anyway, let's continue. Let's get back on topic here. So zombies. Right now, I know a lot of you really passionate zombie enthusiasts out there may disagree with my personal definition of a zombie. Maybe you can add something to it, take something away from it. But generally, I think for, for the most part, most of us will agree that the definition of a zombie is simply a reanimated host, a reanimated body that has certain instincts hyperactivated and other ones turned completely off. So as I get into these two examples, well, before I do, I want to ask you guys a couple of questions. Number one, do you think a zombie apocalypse is actually something that could hit the human race? And number two, would you would you actually want to experience something like that? Now, let me give you let me give you my thoughts on on those uh, two questions. First of all, I absolutely do think it's possible. I'm sure there is a group of evil scientists somewhere in a small country or big country, what have you, in a laboratory that is currently right now in the works of creating a virus that will basically uh, completely dominate the human race in one form or another so that they can restart the world on their terms and conditions, whether it be political power, personal wealth, or some other crazy idea or evil scheme that they're setting up and use a zombie virus to carry out their their diabolical plans. So I know it sound, might sound a little paranoid, but that's my own personal uh, conspiracy theory that I'm sure is actually going on right now. When is it going to happen? I have no idea. Now the next next the next question that I ask, I, I want to interact with you guys. So first of all, I know that there's a lot of you guys that probably would think, yeah, zombie apocalypse, definitely, I want to live through that. That'd be awesome, blow some zombies up and and what have you. First of all, I to be honest with you, yeah, I think the idea sounds fun, but it realistically, no way. There's no way I would ever want to live through a zombie apocalypse because, like I said, we can all we can all just be hypothetical and speculate and say, oh, it'd be great if we had you know a ton of arms and explosives and food rations, water rations, and a place to stay that was safe and secure, and then every once in a while pop out of our uh, out of our safe uh, bunker and just blow some zombies away. Yeah, that'd be great, but realistically, for nine, nine out of ten of us, well, maybe not that many, but for, um, for quite a few of us, that's not how it would go down. A lot of us wouldn't make it, and it would suck, and personally, I think it would be horrifically terrifying to be in that position and to see one of your loved ones or friends bitten or infected with one of these viruses and then know that the best course of action is to put them out of their misery and just take their life. So I personally would not want to experience, but it definitely would be interesting nonetheless. So let's go ahead and get into let's go ahead and get into these examples. Now the first example that I've got for you guys is like I said, it is a virus. It is a real life zombie virus. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to put a couple of links to some articles in the description. You can read the articles and check them out for yourself. See the research that was done when it comes to these uh, these particular aspects of nature. Um, the first thing that we're going to be talking about is a virus. It's called a baculovirus, and it infects a specific type of caterpillar called a gypsy moth caterpillar. Now, when these caterpillars are healthy, happy, they go up into the trees at night and they feed on the leaves. Then, they're, again, their natural behavior this is a climb back down, their natural instinct, climb back down in the morning and hide from predators that are looking for them during the day. When these caterpillars are infected with this particular type of virus, their instinct to feed is hyperactivated. And 
even though they know even though they shouldn't be out during the day they still are so what happens is they're consumed in this viral state and then digested and crapped back out onto uh, the leaves where they these these other healthy caterpillars live and in turn the healthy caterpillars consume the leaves that have the the viral droppings on them and turn the virus spreads now what's even more interesting and fascinating is when this virus actually runs its course the way that it wants to what happens is if these caterpillars in this viral state are not consumed by a predator once they're done feeding they climb to the very top of the tree where they live and they are then converted into a liquid ooze viral goo that then drips down from the top of the tree lands on the other leaves that healthy caterpillars eat and again the virus is spread even more now the next example that we're going to talk about is in regards to a real life zombie toxin now the particular animal or insect that possesses this toxin is called a jewel wasp and what this female jewel wasp does is it finds a cockroach and it wrestles it to the ground once it has the cockroach subdued, it injects directly into its brain a zombie toxin, which in turn reanimates the cockroach so it no longer has the ability to fight or even move whatsoever. The cockroach is now the, is now the jewel wasp's slave, and it is dragged back down into the jewel wasp burrow, where the wasp will then lay its eggs into the abdomen of this particular cockroach, and it, st it stays alive throughout this entire process. About eight days pass, and the larvae, the eggs hatch and consume the cockroach alive. Now, if you're like me, you're probably asking yourself, well, why doesn't the wasp just kill it? I mean, wouldn't that be, a, you know, wouldn't that just be a, a more sensible solution? Why do you have to keep it alive? Well, it's, it's a very interesting. A cockroach will rot within a day if it's dead. But again, if it's kept alive in this particular state, then the jewel wasp's eggs have the best chance at a, a good start in life. So I found both of those particular examples really interesting. I've got a couple more that I could share with you guys if you're interested in that. Please let me know in the comment section and I'll definitely take steps to uh, get that commentary ready to go for you. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the last commentary that I did had also had to do with zombies, you guys, but it was on a much lighter note. It was on a possible uh, zombie Easter egg for Black Ops 2 in regards to the creative strategist or the community community manager for Infinity War, Mr. Robert Bowling. If you guys enjoyed this video, then please leave a, a like rating, click the like button, and share it with your friends. That is pretty much going to do it for me, you guys. Hope, hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay, 39 and 9. Not too, uh, not too shabby with this particular class setup, and look forward to more content from me coming very shortly. Thanks again. I'll talk to you later.